All right, what up everybody? Coming at you with another video. This time we're talking about change in velocity. And uh, velocity is a measure of how fast something is going and in what direction. All right, so you can think of it as speed and direction put together. All right, so obviously velocity would change if the speed changes or if the direction changes. Uh, so there's three circumstances where we have a change in velocity and we want to figure out how we can assign a number to that change so we can measure it. And the, uh, the three circumstances are, one, if the object is speeding up, because uh, obviously if it gets faster, the number for speed is changing, which means its velocity is changing. Then if it's slowing down, speed is changing, therefore velocity is changing. And if it's changing direction. So even if the speed doesn't change, when, when it changes direction, there is still a change in velocity because velocity includes direction, not just the speed. All right. So either in, in any of these cases, it's possible to put a number to how uh, big of a change of velocity there was. And we're going to talk about how to do that. All right. So here's the formula. Uh, change in velocity is going to be equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So if there is some event that changes the velocity of an object, all you need to know is what is the velocity after that event minus what is the velocity before that event, all right? And you can the delta V right here, delta, uh, the, uh, the triangle looking sign is the, the Greek letter delta, and that is used uh, in front of variables to show that we're trying to measure a change, all right? So final velocity minus initial velocity. So again, we're going to look at uh, what's the velocity after the event occurs and then minus what's the velocity before. So let's look at an example speeding up. Okay, here's a rocket and it's gonna be shot into the air. And when it goes up in the air, uh, its velocity is 40, right? Let's assume it could be 40 meters per second, 40 miles per hour, depending on what we're measuring. But um, if we wanna put a number to the change, then we need to know what was the final velocity after the thing happened minus the, the velocity before. So the final velocity was 40. As we saw, this, this rocket was, was carrying it up with a velocity of 40 meters per second, uh, minus the initial velocity, which is zero. So you just subtract those two numbers, and you get uh, that the change in velocity was 40. OK, so here's a graph. If you were to graph the motion, you would be uh, on the ground for a certain amount of time, which would in case you have a velocity of zero. Then when it shot up, right, its velocity quickly turned to 40. And uh, so you can see that is a jump of 40 on the velocity graph. So that's where, uh, that's, that's another way. If you just had the graph, you could look at how big this jump was right here. And that would tell you what the change in velocity was. Second example, let's look at something slowing down. All right, so here's Bup ahead. He's gonna drive his car 20 meters per second and it's gonna crash into a brick wall. And when he does, of course, he's gonna have a velocity of zero. All right, so what was his change in velocity? Okay, well, it would be his final velocity minus initial. You remember his final, his initial was 20, right? And that's that's incorrect right there. Um, and we'll change that in the future, but and his final velocity was zero. So if you subtract those, um, you get zero minus 20, which means that his um, his change in velocity was minus 20. Okay, and if you do the... Uh, velocity graph, you'll see that for some time, his velocity was 20, he crashes into the wall, it comes down to zero. And so this is a drop of 20, right? And, and that makes sense, you have a negative number and uh, you see a drop on the velocity graph. All right, changing direction. There's bump ahead again, he's gonna run to the ball and this ball is gonna bounce him backwards. Boing. There he goes. So what was, his, what was his change in velocity? Because he was going 15, like his speed was 15 the entire time, right? both before and after. So does that mean his change in velocity was zero? Well, that's not the way the math works out. So you see that before he bumped into the ball, his velocity was a positive 15. Afterwards, it was a negative 15. So if you do final minus initial velocity, it's actually negative 15 in the front minus a positive 15. And a negative 15 minus uh, 15 is equal to minus 30. 
All right, and, and here's something that um, you need to realize that when something changes direction, especially if it, it goes from going one direction to the opposite direction, like going forward to going to the right to completely going to the left, the change in velocity is actually greater right, than if it had just come to a stop because it needs to, in order for it to uh, bounce back like this, it has to first come to a stop and then speed up in the opposite direction. So you got double the, the change in velocity right there. All right, so his change in velocity was even greater than, than his velocity there or backwards. And you can see this if you do the velocity graph. You can see there's a, a big drop right there as he goes from a positive velocity down to a negative velocity as he's moving backwards, and it drops by 30. All right, so final velocity minus initial velocity, that's how you find the change in velocity. Just you have to know the velocity before and after the event occurs. And you can find it that way, right? It can be seen as a jump or a drop on a velocity graph. Hopefully this answers your questions about change in velocity, and I will see you all in another video.